Can you hear what makes this Taylor Swift instrumental sound well put together? So I recreated Taylor Swift's style from her 1989 album, which is the instrumental you just heard. And while recreating it, I realized a production principle that is very subtle, but when applied can take your tracks to a whole new level. So if you struggle with getting your tracks to kind of sound glued or bigger than they really are, you're going to definitely want to watch this video as I share with you this principle and some music production tips and techniques along the way. Let's go ahead and dive right in. One major takeaway I discovered when recreating this track is the power of layering your sounds. Not just throwing random samples together and layering for layering's sake, but strategically layering your sound so that you create the texture and depth that you're looking for. Let me focus in on the drums to show you what I mean. So here I have a drum rack in Ableton Live, and I've got a couple samples loaded. We've got a kick drum here that I'm gonna start off with. Now there's a nice bottom end and beef with that kick drum, but as I listen to the reference, I could really use that acoustic dry thumpiness of a kick. So I could spend hours on tweaking that one kick drum to, to have that characteristic, or I could just simply find another sample with that characteristic and layer it on top of it. What I decided to do was actually use a VST plugin instead of a drum sample. So I dragged and dropped Exxon Audio's Addictive Drums 2 right onto an actual drum rack cell. And here, now we have just an acoustic kick drum. The reason why I went this route, rather than just finding an acoustic drum sample that I might have in my hard drive and throw it on there, is because I can have a little bit more flexibility in tweaking the timbre, the room, the overhead miking, so I've got a lot more control to shape and tone of the sound of, that I'm looking for. So, one thing though, if you're asking, well, how do you get just the kick drum to play if you're dragging and dropping a whole drum kit into your drum rack. What I had to do was use a pitch plugin before the addictive drums and then move down the semi tones and trigger this actual cell until it triggered the actual drum note of the kick. So for instance, real quick, we'll get back to the video lesson. I just want to give you the heads up that if you're looking for professional mentorship and helpful guidance and helping you level up your music production skill set. Maybe you're just starting off with learning how to produce your own music and you would love the accountability, a community of like-minded individuals, and just some all-around helpful resources that can help you achieve producing the music you're passionate about making. Well, then I want to turn your attention to visiting BeatAcademy.com and become a Beat Academy member today. There's all the resources that I've put together. There's leading industry professionals that come and mentor and pour into the community and hold you accountable and help you take that next step forward with producing the music that you're passionate about making. So once again, visit BeatAcademy.com for more information on how you can become a Beat Academy member today. All right, let's jump right back to the lesson. Now that I've got it, I can layer these two sounds together. Giving me the texture and the punch that I'm looking for as one cohesive uh, kick. Same thing applies for the snare drum. So here with the snare drum, I actually decided to create a instrument rack that allows me to layer multiple snare samples. So the way I did this is in the Ableton Live's drum rack, you just simply find a sound that you like and just simply hit Command G to group that sound or to create that sound into another additional rack. So grouping that sound, now you can go ahead and hit the layer window and drag multiple samples and that allows you to stack and layer those samples. So here's the snare drum. and it consists of two separate snare drums to get the overall tone that I'm looking for. And I'm using the internal return and send to use an EQ and a reverb so that I can actually send some of that snare inside the drum rack to an auxiliary reverb. And so we add the hi-hat there and a clap. And that's our drums. Then I'm also incorporating some percussion elements. So I've got a tambourine. 
and a shaker. And I'm running them really heavy on a reverb return track because it creates this nice atmosphere and depth in the track. But what I'm using on the tambourine particularly is I've got an erosion plugin to actually add some wide noise to this tambourine, which gives a really cool texture. So I've got the tambourine and then I'm layering it with the shaker The layering principle continues to be applied over to the bass line. Here's the main bass line. I'm using the Wavetable in Ableton Live, using two oscillators set to a sawtooth, one a whole octave lower, and I brought the cutoff frequency down, and I'm routing the, uh, the cutoff over to envelope two and shaping that envelope to the way I like it to get the response I'm looking for. It gives that nice, cool, rubbery type of bass. And I'm using an arpeggiator to give me a consistent 16th note interval pattern. So we've got that one sound, and now I'm going to duplicate that same exact bass line. Just hit app, uh, Command D, duplicate that with another wavetable. What's the purpose of me layering this? Is it just layering for layering sake? No, I want a little bit more of the pluckiness to be evident. So rather than tweaking the first original bass, get another bass line, that has more of that characteristic and then blend the two signals together. Baseline number two is gonna be a whole octave higher and one sawtooth and one triangle a waveform. And so with the two of them blended together, then I'm also using the layering principle over here with some of the acoustic instruments, or in this case, virtual acoustic instruments such as the electric vintage. And then I have an acoustic guitar playing the same exact part. Then we're using the layering principle also for the pads. So here I have one wavetable track that is just playing a two oscillator sawtooth. And then I'm gonna layer this pad with another track here. And this one I'm using my Beat Academy Orbit plugin, which you can download and have absolutely free. Just click the link below to download this VSC plugin. I love using this. I created this for this purpose to be a nice lush layer to my pads and create some really nice atmosphere. So I'm gonna set it to the horizons patch right here and layer that with my pad. And now let's listen to it all together. So the major takeaway here is understanding how to layer with the purpose of adding certain characteristics or spotlighting certain attributes of that layer along with the other sounds that you're layering it with. Rather than just smacking a bunch of sounds together because you're gonna think that that's what's gonna make it sound fuller or bigger. Sometimes when you go that route, you actually do more harm than good. So I hope this was encouraging and helpful and insightful in any way. By the way, if you wanna go ahead and download this Ableton Live session so that you can follow along with the video, understand how I kind of put all these things together, you can go ahead and access that by clicking the link below in the description box or by visiting beatacademy.com slash pack. I've also included Orbit, that free VST plugin that I've mentioned. And if you have viewed any of my other press videos on this channel, I've also included some of the Ableton Live sessions for some of those popular breakdowns as well. It's all included in that download. So just go ahead and click the link below to access this session file and many other goodies that I have available for you. And if you're serious about taking your next step with your music production and you're looking for a professional mentorship and guidance to help you level up your music production skill set, then I want to direct your attention over to beatacademy.com and become a Beat Academy member today, where you'll get access to all the resources that I've created and that are available for you to help you level up your skill set, but yet acquire the community, the mentorship, and the guidance 
and the accountability that you're looking for within the membership as well. So more information can be found at beatacademy.com. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe so you can stay up to date with upcoming videos. Take care.